the saying goes, contestants ready, gladiators ready, teams ready, adjudicators I hope ready. Three, two, one, and the zebra blows the whistle. Okay, so lineup is pretty much as we suspected. Two Bensons aside, a Kutuzov, a Chapayev, an Artigo facing a Charles Martel, two Charlies facing off against each other, and ooh, the battleships have tweaks like two North Carolinas on MDiv, a North Carolina and an Amagi on OMC side, and of course the usual Miramat Shokakus. Interesting that we have not seen any Enterprises whatsoever in this tournament so far. I suspect that is because she just doesn't have the fighters to hang in the air superiority role. As I've commented before, in high tier play like this, carriers are not so much about damage as they are about air superiority and spotting. For that, the fighters are actually superior. Not least because if you run out of planes, well, you can't spot. And, yep, he's Larry. So, it's headbutting time. Or alternatively, I don't know, um, docking time. Um, yank, 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 yank. Headbutt, headbutt, boom. Right. The hulls caress gently. They felt uncomfortable. Also, I am, I am not dead. Interesting. I am not dead. However, that problem will solve itself very shortly. Yay! I got a kill. Right, let's get to the job at hand then. So, sticking with the team, and to start with, we're seeing a centre deployment. So, normally you'd expect to see a refused flank at this point. However, we've got two Charles Martels and the Benson pushing out towards C. We have the second Benson pushing in towards B, and what looks like a Kutuzov pushing down towards A while, well, being leisurely about it. So fire support into B. Of course, that plan could backfire because if Meow takes too long getting south and into the cover of those two islands over there, he's going to find himself broadside onto some battleships coming up from the east. However, he's spotted, he's turning in a little. He's still running a bit of a risk from the enemy North Carolina, but Legend Begins is pushing in. He's pulled back. He's got the cap going on B, or he would have if he was not being jammed. There's a fraction of green on the B indicator, but it's stopped. So there is at least one Benson in point B. Farzaleth Farz sends in the fighters to take a quick look, pushes over, eyeing up some bombers as well, maybe, but I don't think... Well, yeah, stalemate there. They're just studiously ignoring each other. They're more interested in the reconnaissance data. And Legend Begins at this point is stern on to the enemy. He's in a good position to break away. And Cutleron gets spotted. Immediately the shells start whizzing around his ears. First volley of armor piercing comes in. Cutleron had much the same idea and breaks away. Don't think Cutleron took any damage there. Managed to duck away and get into cover before the inevitable happened. Farzaleth knocks down the enemy dive bombers so the wicked... Finds himself suddenly short of reconstate. He brings in his other aircraft to compensate, but with Farzaleth having three fighter squadrons over B, he's not in a hurry to engage there, and quite wisely too. Meanwhile, over in point C, Flambas is making a fairly solid grab. He's not being contested on that cap at the moment, but there is a smoke cloud to the southeast, so you have to wonder what is over there. Could be the Kutuzov, could be the second Benson Fabian 141. I suspect it's the Kutuzov from the sheer amount of high explosive that smoke cloud just spat out. Of course that implies a spotter if he's accurately targeting elegant leets. So rounds come down, doesn't hit anything but those rounds were close enough that someone else is in point or near point C but there's no block on the cap at the moment. So what on earth is going on over with MDivX? Huh, curiouser and curiouser. OMC right now taking the early advantage. They've got caps going in A, B and C pretty much uncontested. So MDiv you would think would be trying to get forward a bit more aggressively, but they're not managing it at the moment. Point B, 
I tell lie, point B is jammed. So that cap has been blocked. There is at least one MDivX ship in point B. Farzaleth is getting his fighters over to spot, but they've had no luck as yet. Dive bombers are moving in to take a look, but the Wicked has got his own fighters closing in. And there's not a lot that they're seeing over there. So this is kind of curious. Let's just make sure the camera's locked to the legend begin. So we're getting his perspective. Gencon D is to the southeast. It must presumably be Catleron who's blocking the cap, but the aircraft just went overhead. They didn't see anything. Of course, if the aircraft go too close to the North Carolina of Gencon D, they're going to get shot out of the sky for no reward. So that is a bit of an intelligence gap for OMC at the moment. Point A has fallen to Meow and Radical Larry. They're now in a position to start snapping shots off at Game Condi. Just get a little long range fire in, maybe persuade him to budge a bit. But over in point A, things are getting <laughs> interesting to say the least. We'll lock camera onto Imperator of Chaos just a second, get his point of view. We've got, again, this is something we saw in the last game, absolute dominance and elegant leet going on a bit of a flanking run, and they are eyeing up, well, the enemy, Charlie Denergy over there, who is on fire on 18,000 health, and on his way to find some friends very, very quickly, because right now he is severely outgunned. 15,000 health, and he has got multiple fires burning, and I'm assuming no Damcon if he hasn't controlled that much Bernie. So he is in a fair amount of trouble. 12,000 health, 11,000 health. He breaks contact. However, he has bought his colleagues enough time because the OMC ships have been forced out of point C long enough that MDivX have managed to grab a cap. Flambus was forced out of the cap circle. He was jamming it. Imperator's got his detection going, his hydro, if I'm reading the mark correctly, that could be his radar as well, but you'd expect to see something if it was. So I suspect hydro. And critically, he's not seeing anything, which means that you can rule out about five kilometers or so. Basically, the northwestern quarter of the cap circle is clear of enemies, which means that, yep, the Benson is pretty much at its last contact point. Unfortunately, Denergy has managed to get the fire under control, just about. He's on 4,000 health, and bingo, we have a smoke cloud in the southeast corner shielding Tommy 26. That is going to be Catlon laying smoke to cover both Tommy 26 and I suspect Andej D303. Not to mention Oliver 1261, who was last seen in that area as well, so that's a very tight little knot of MDivX ships in that smoke cloud. And, yep, you guessed it, tight smoke cloud, cluster of ships, torpedo time. <laughs> Meanwhile, however, the position is still favouring OMC. It is, no one has yet died yet and we're seven and a half minutes into the game. No streamers don't count as deaths. Those are entirely self-inflicted. But OMC has two, con well, one control point up. B is currently contested. They have got an 80 point lead, but well, that could turn quite quickly if nobody capitalized. Also, what's interesting is that, excuse me a second, I need a lock on to get a look at the ships in point. Hey, there we go. So we have got Radical Larry and Meow both on half health. Now, given that they were dueling with a North Carolina and an Otago, you have to wonder what's happened while we were looking at the other control points and I suspect a lot of 16 inch gunfire is what happened. Radical Larry's popped his repair party trying to heal back some of that damage, get himself back over 30,000 health which he does but right now they've got very little to shoot at. There's Gamecon DE and I suspect Larry is lining up on him as we speak. Guns come round and yep, armor piercing from the 16 inch guns, high explosive from the Kutstoff. They get a shot on the Atago, who unmasks right as they pull the trigger. Game Condi takes minor damage, returns fire, but Larry is angled and what doesn't miss bounces for minimal damage. 
Ouch. There we go. Legend Begins got caught short by Fabian 141. And we have the first kill of the game going to MDVX. Critically, that is going to allow them to start their cap on point B. So that will put MDVX two control points up. However, what Fabian probably no, doesn't know about just yet, although he will if those fighters are spotting, is the North Carolina just around the corner. Grief will be looking to get some blood, but he also has to turn away or he'll eat far too many torpedoes for safety. Fabian presumably saw that. He's looped back and is running east. Of course, if he goes a bit too far, he's going to find himself under the guns of our Russian friends. And I actually wanted to lock onto Grief at that point. There we go. Right, so Flumbus has also seen the problem. He's looping back. Imperator of Chaos is in a good position. Fabian takes a couple of nasty hits. He's down to 4,000 health. Uh, but it isn't enough. Point B has been captured. MDVX are now two control points and about 50 victory points up thanks to that destroyer kill. The question is, can they capitalize? OMC are responding fairly rapidly. They're getting ships down into B and if they can con concentrate their forces up reasonably quickly, they might be able to control this situation without too much difficulty. Of course, that does mean this cluster of contacts in E6 and E7 is going to have to be dealt with and Flambus has dropped torps in the water to start exactly that. Catleron unmasks just for a second, gets some high explosive fire. Did take some hits I think but nothing significant. We'll see how much health he's lost if any when he next reappears. Torpedoes are running into the smoke cloud. I wonder what we're gonna hit. Roll them bones ladies and gentlemen, roll them bones. We had a a battleship and a couple of cruisers in this smoke cloud. The question is, are they still there? Come on, explosions? Are we going to get explosions? We're not going to get explosions. Oh well, pity. So, MDVX now some 90 points up and gaining thanks to that second control point. Flambus pushes out from behind and starts turning because he's got torpedo bombers inbound and between you and me torpedo bombers spying a nice nice little setup like that yes yeah, someone's gonna go for the attack dive bombers come in torpedo bombers take two take one didn't get the angle before they were shot down but radar has been popped and oh wow flambus must be absolutely cursing his luck that he didn't get torpedo hits during that sour because there were so many enemy ships there that would have been some epic torpedo beat and Andej takes out Imperator of Chaos in the Shapayev just by burning him down. MDVX claim another kill they are now two ships and 230 points up. Critically that was M OMC's only radar cruiser they may have some hydros dotted about but he <laughs> This could be about to get a little tricky for them on the detection side. Tommy26, however, ducks caught short as the smoke phase, ducks back in, but not before he takes a hit. The smoke cloud is starting to fade, so that tight cluster of MDiv ships needs to either start motoring or drop fresh smoke, which is what they're doing, or they're going to have some serious firepower problems. They've got the fresh smoke down, however, so with... Uh, with Cutleron providing spotting for them, they're in a pretty good position. Nobody really wants to be the first person to get near that angry a smoke cloud, and with no radar, they're gonna ha someone's gonna have to get close to use hydro. Of course, in order to get close, that means getting close to a very angry smoke cloud, which has a Benson spotting for it. And when you're in a Charles Martel on 6,800 health with enemy aircraft spotting and 17 kilometers to cover, it is not necessarily the best choice from a long-term survival prospect point of view. So we'll look on to grief for a second and then we'll jump south to Radical Larry just to pick him up and just see how things are going down at point A. So snap down, there we go. And the answer is they're 
not going brilliantly. Uncle Nut is on the other side of A, inching his way forwards. Meow and Larry are still dueling Gamecom D, who has apparently hammered them both down to 25% health. Okay, that's kind of interesting. Make that about 20% health for Meow, who's backing up, but perhaps recognise that he is a little bit outmatched over there. And meanwhile, I think Uncle has realised that he can start to inch forward into point A and grab himself a sneaky control point, which will definitely put the screws on OMC. They are now 200 points down. There's the cap start into C, oddly enough. Cap B, of course, is secure for MDivX. However, here's the question. Can they make this stick? There's still this very, very angry smoke cloud. Flambas is doing what he can, but, well, he's on fire. He's got enemy aircraft overhead. Granted, they're not going to be able to do much directly, but that's not the point. They're spotted. He's had to pop his damn con. He's got his defensive fire going. Question is, has he broken contact? I think he has. He's eight kilometers from the nearest enemy aircraft. Farazelis fighters managed to buy him some time, and that angry smoke cloud has finally faded. Of course, that does just mean they've popped yet another very angry smoke cloud. MDVX are rolling their smokes to great effect here. However, as long as OMC have nominal control of C, they have to keep something in there to keep it jammed, which means at the moment, I would say Cutleron is earning every single man of the match point that's going to them. Meanwhile, down at point A, things are not going well for OMC. We'll just flick the camera back over for a second. Just skip ships until we get one that's handy. There we go. Because, well, yeah, it's not looking good, is it? Uncle Nut has got himself not only into point A, he's got himself round on the other side of this island to Larry and Meow. So if either of them try to get round, yeah, it's not looking good for OMC on this match, is it? <laughs> right. Yeah, okay, stream is stuttering. Okay, um, I am recording locally as well, so I will do what I can. These will go up as local streams. The fact that it's Saturday afternoon, I suspect it is just the neighbours logging on and breaking contention. We were fine up to around about five o'clock. And local time and then it all just started going downhill it's now 10 to 6 so if the neighbors have started streaming their evening movies i will be extremely irritated because that does rather put a crimp in what i can do um i can drop the resolution a bit but i'll have to restart the stream to do it that will take some strain off the bandwidth of course, the strain on the bandwidth is nothing compared to the strain that MDivX are putting OMC under at the moment. Tor they've got torpedoes into the angry smoke cloud, but again, no joy for Flambus. And right now, M OMC are going to have to come up with something sharp or they are going to find themselves out of options. In fact, I am not sure how they can actually turn this round. That said, I could very well be wrong, because if we glance back to the south, we can see that Uncle Nut has a wee bitty of a problem. He's got grief firing at him from the north, as well as both Meow and Radical Larry pushing into the cap. That is going to be a tricky position for him. He's had to break out of the cap, so it's now essentially turning into a two control points to one advantage for OMC if they can secure both A and C. Of course, MDivX know this, so all they really need to do is snap back to the north. And there we go, there's the problem. MDivX have managed to grab C, they are now two points to nil up, 967 points, 973, 310 points up. OMC have probably lost this courtesy of a very angry smoke cloud. Hmm, I don't honestly see what else they can do. They've managed to grab A back, that stops the what's slightly, but 985 points C under control. Whoa, there we go. Uncle Nook takes a big hit from Radical Larry, goes down 928. 
However, almost immediately, Andre D303 puts down the Charles Martel of Absolute Dominance, restores the balance, 974 points. Catleron firing into Flambas. Now, with that situation, if Flambas goes, that will end the game. 1300 health, 980 points. 983 to 666. Fighters are going in. That will keep Flambas spotted. Really, at this point, Catleron can take a risk, get a bit aggressive, come round this corner, but with the number of guns pointing at Flambas, I don't think he's going to have the time to do it. 804 health. Salvo's coming down. 210, 0, 000 points. OMC have lost the second game in the sequence, so it is one all. Between MDivX and OMC, we are having a repeat of the last time these teams met. It's all going to come down to that third game.